Alrighty guys, this is the latest build in the 3D print hangar. This is a 50mm EDF MiG-15, and this design is by Timeless Wings and can be downloaded from 3dcults.com for free. Now this aircraft is 95% lightweight PLA, with the exception of a couple of parts. There's a couple of parts that are regular PLA, and there's a couple of parts that are PLA Tough. The PLA Tough is in purple, regular PLA is in this uh, jade white. And the EDF shroud for this aircraft is one from a previous video. My buddy Jay had a fatty F-14 that didn't go that well. And the EDF shrouds were pretty much trashed. So I printed brand new EDF shrouds out of PLA Tough and they fit almost perfectly into this EDF mount. Just a couple of layers of masking tape and it fits in there real nice. There's also these brackets that mount the EDF mount, double mount, into the airframe. But yeah, we're gonna get started. One thing to always keep in mind, guys, whenever you're building one of these 3D printed aircraft, you always wanna have a paper towel handy because when you apply glue to these seams, more times than not, you're gonna have glue ooze out and you're gonna wanna have something to wipe it. Now for the assembly of this particular, particular aircraft, we're gonna be using this Starbond thick CA glue for 95% of the assembly. I'm not sponsored by them in any way, I just really love this glue. One thing I should also mention guys, dry fitting your parts before you apply any glue is crucial. I've already done that step off camera prior to assembly, but the last thing you want to do is have glue covering a part, you put it together and it doesn't fit right, then you got a whole mess on your hands. I am assembling this inside guys, however I am not using activator because I am not in a well ventilated area. Safety first. At this point in the build guys, we are going to begin installing the electronics. We're going to be using four 9 gram servos, in this case the FMS servos at a crashed aircraft. This 50 millimeter EDF, I do not know the spec on the motor, there is not a, there's nothing on it. A 60 amp BSC, 4 channel receiver. For programming sake, we're just using a 3S 1300, but I'm going to wind up using a 4S when I actually fly this. But let's get started with this. Side note guys, for your CA glue, as you're gluing, wipe this tip off because the glue just winds up accumulating on the tip over time if you don't keep cleaning it and then your tip is just, at that point it's almost useless. So make sure you keep your tips clean. Another quick tip here guys, always make sure that everything is going the correct direction before you permanently assemble everything. It's much easier to do it now than to try and wrestle it out of the plane if you made a mistake. At this point guys, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our push rod, in this case one millimeter piano wire, and we're going to be putting a Z-Bend on it. This is a Z-Bend tool. Hello. If you're planning on doing a lot of DIY projects, this thing is so handy. So once you have a Z-Bend in your push rod, you can then hook it up to your servo arm and run it through the channel for the push rod. And with that all mounted, guys, you always, always, always test twice, secure once. You always want to make sure you cross some of your T's and dot and all your I's when you're building these things. We have free movement of our two elevator servos. Now we can put the screws to hold those servo arms on, hook up the EDF to the ESC, and put this all together. Another reason to double check everything, guys, I wound up having to reverse the polarity of my ESC to get the EDF to spin the correct direction. And just like that guys, we have our EDF mounted, and I'm not sure how well you can see it in the video, but I have the ESC wires mounted off to the left of the shroud, just so as that there's nothing in front of those fan blades to get sucked in there. We have our ESC chilling right up here. The receiver actually gets mounted into the battery cover, so you want to have a solid length of wire coming out of 
the elevator connections and in the future the aileron connections coming into the body but yeah that step is done sorry guys i didn't realize my phone died so that is our mig 15 trainer pretty much all done all we have to do is get the push rod linkages connected to the control surfaces and get everything hinged and this thing is ready to go